What is going on guys? Tyson back with you. Still here in Santa Cruz. We're actually set up right outside of Current E-Bikes. This is a local shop here in Santa Cruz. They're on our dealer network as well, so you can check them out in our shop directory. It's actually shipment day. They've got in some new Gazelle bikes here, which is fitting because we are going to be checking out another Gazelle bike today. I am here with Evout from Gazelle Bikes, and today we are looking at the Ultimate T10 Plus HMB. HMB there stands for Hybrid Mid-Drive Bosch, and the T10 implies that it is a 10-speed, and this is the speed version. We checked out the standard Ultimate T10 yesterday, which was the Class 1. This is a Class 3 speed pedelec. We have got a Bosch Performance Line Speed on here. So still a mid-drive motor. This is the Performance Line Speed 4.0. It's got an awesome reduction in its footprint here. We're looking at, I think it's 6.3 pounds. Does that sound right? About? Yeah, 6.3 pounds on this, which is awesome. Lighter than ever before. And this one, since it's a speed, it can boost you up to 28 miles per hour. You can hear this one quite a bit more than the standard Performance Line. We'll show that to you when we get into the ride test in a little bit here. But before we get into the details, let's talk a little bit more about the big picture here. If you're not familiar with Gazelle, they are based out of the Netherlands. They've actually been in business since 1892. So with Gazelle, you get a two-year comprehensive warranty plus a 10-year warranty on the frame. And for this bike, for the Ultimate T10 Plus, you have some options here for your frame sizes and for your color choices. You get the high step here. That's available in a medium or a large frame size. We're looking at the large here today. And then you also get a mid-step where that top bar comes you know, right about down right here, a little bit more approachable. And if you want that one, you've got two choices there as well for a medium size or down to a small. And you get two choices of colors for all of those. This one here is the champion red gloss. And then there's also a light dust gloss as well. That's kind of a light blue looking color. So you've got those options to work with as well. Now this bike is 37, or excuse me, 39.99 as you see it here. And this is what we like to call a purpose-built and feature-rich electric bike. So purpose-built really just means that it is designed from the ground up to be an e-bike and has e-bike specific components. You can see that, for example, with the tires here, the Schwalbe Energizer Plus, they can handle higher speeds and higher stress that you get with an e-bike. And plus they also come with G-Guard 5 puncture protection. That's the highest you can get from Schwalbe and that reflective sidewall striping awesome for that side visibility. The frame on this bike is a great example of it being purpose-built as well. It is a lot thicker and more rigid and they actually, so we have this solid piece up here by the headset that is hydroformed and then similar for the bottom bracket one solid piece and you can see these weld points they're hidden pretty well here but this is actually a double walled frame that gives it some extra strength extra rigidity and it performs really well you'll see in the ride test later but we were able to go cruising downhill at about 35 miles an hour and i was riding with one hand while filming felt rock solid we get of course the integrated fenders here aluminum alloy on those so they're not going to rattle the same way that plastic might which is awesome they've got the plastic caps on the end for a little bit of extra protection you also get a rear rack comes with a bungee clip on the top so you can easily fasten stuff to it standard weight limit on actually wait this was a little bit higher weight limit you can see it here 27 kilograms where a more typical rear rack is only 25 so a little bit extra strength on there there's this tail light integrated into the rear rack on the back here, four LEDs. It's got the side cutouts. That's great for some extra side visibility. And these are integrated directly into the battery. So you can turn those on and off from the controls. You also get a integrated headlight here. This is an AXA headlight, the AXA Blue Line 50E. 50 lumens on this, so it is really bright. Does a great job of lighting up the road ahead of you instead of only being good for visibility for other people seeing you. Get the extra reflector down there as well. So all kinds of features are, that are included on here. So let's start, uh, we're gonna start diving into some of these in a little bit more detail. For the drivetrain here, check this out. We have got Shimano Dior XT. This is high quality stuff. This is some of the top of the line from Shimano. You see this a lot on mountain bikes. It's got the Shadow Plus here. This helps to 
increase the tension on the chain as well as it limits the movement of the derailleur a bit. Basically that helps you to shift more cleanly and also helps to protect against the chain jumping off. We've got a cassette back here, 10 speed, and we're looking at 11 to 36 teeth on that. And so pretty solid range on it. You can tackle a variety of different, uh, whether that's you know high, high speed using that higher end there or going all the way down to your low gear with 36 teeth, you can tackle some pretty hefty hills, which of course we will be doing in the ride test in a little bit. Now, looking up at the front here, we've got a 52 tooth chain ring on this, but this model, this was, it's sort of a prototype model here. So the production one is actually, a, did you say it was a 48 teeth, is that right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. 48. Yep, yeah, so this is gonna shrink down just a little bit. As you can see, this one is just a little bit too big, scratched up the paint on there. So if you notice that, don't worry, you're not gonna have to worry about that with the production version. You get this plastic chain guard right here, and it actually does function as a chain guide. It's a little bit hard to see, but the back bracket of it does help to keep the chain on as well. So between that and having this Dior XT with the Shadow Plus, I don't think you're ever gonna have any issues with that chain jumping off of there. The cranks here, these are Miranda cranks, aluminum alloy, standard length on these, of course, 170 millimeters. And do you guys make the pedals yourselves? I was gonna ask, because I didn't see any branding on them. Um, gazelle yeah, Gazelle branded, yep. So aluminum alloy there, and they've got the rubber grips on it, as you can see, helps out with the traction. Side reflectors, of course. And while we're back here on the back of the bike, you get this AXA Defender lock here. This is a cafe lock. And so this is awesome for if you need to, you know, just leave your bike outside the grocery store and run in or something like that. We're gonna have you go ahead and demonstrate this here. So you just turn so the key. You just turn the key, and then you take the lever down on the other side and then you release it and you have the key in your hands. And the best part about this is this is a key to like system with the battery, which is over on this side for this one. So that's awesome for if you're just stopping at the store really quick, you got to run in, you can just lock it like that, leave it outside. Someone can't just jump on it and right away. And uh, the cool thing about these two, before we move on, is there's a lot of extra uh, accessories that you can use from AXA that connect in right here. For example, they've got a chain lock that can insert in here, and then you can you know, loop it around the, the frame and then around a bike lock and then connect it into the loop there. So it's easy to lock the entire bike up, but still just have the one key. Really helps out with simplicity. And then of course for the battery, we'll go ahead and put this in here. Helps you get that in right. Now I'll, I'll let you pop that out of there. And so it's a, it, it's kind of hard to see on the bottom, but it is a two-step removal process. There's a little tab that you have to hit down there. Now let's take a look at the battery here. So this is one of Bosch's newer standard batteries here, the PowerTube 500. So this is 13.4 amp hour and a 36 volt battery. And Bosch is known for having pretty standardized components. So before they had the Bosch PowerPack 500, and that one was very standardized. You could swap that between all kinds of bikes. The power tube here is pretty standardized, has the same connectors, but there's a vertical mount point and also a side mount. And then they let manufacturers customize them quite a bit for the back panel on it. So not quite as interchangeable, but in exchange for swapping that out, you get a lot better integration into the frame. All right, I will let you pop that back in there. As you can see, there's a power button right here. You can actually use this to power on the bike itself, as opposed to having to push the power button up on the control. And then the charge port right up here on the right side of the frame. Oop, we'll pop that out. It's on a leash, it fastens really securely, and best part is it is up here on the frame as opposed to being down here next to the bottom bracket. And of course the bad side, having it down here puts it right in the path of the crank arm so that if you're maneuvering the bike around, you could bonk it with those cranks and potentially damage your charger. So I love seeing it up here. Let's see if I can get that to pop back in there. There we go. And I didn't bring the charger for you guys, unfortunately. I'll have a picture of it on the review when we post the full written review back at electricbikereview.com, but it's a 1.6 pound charger and it charges at four amps. That is about twice what you get on most bikes. So that's great, you can charge it even faster and 1.6 pounds is still not too heavy. That's pretty easy to transport in a bag. So I think they did a good job with that there. All right, so let's go ahead and move up into the cockpit here. We've got these ergonomic locking grips. They're rubberized. You can see we got the two-tone colors. They feel pretty comfy, and I appreciate that they're locking. With ergonomic grips, it's pretty easy to bear down on them a bit and get them to 
you know, twist around a lot. And so I appreciate that they lock into place. Of course, we got the flick bell on the right grip here. And then the Shimano shifters here for that Shimano Dior XT trigger shifters. So you can dump a couple or up to three at once if you're shifting down into easier gears. And then of course the pull trigger on the top there to shift harder. And of course, you know, it's a Shimano Dior XT, like we said, they're a big name in the industry. Fantastic shifting performance out of those. And the, before we continue on with the stuff in the cockpit here, I do want to talk a little bit about the adjustability of the bike here. So as you can see, the stem right here, you get a huge range that you could, where you can adjust the angle of the top half there. And so you can swivel that up and down and then adjust the handlebars. Really great for fitting riders of different sizes. You do need a tool to adjust that and to adjust the seat, of course. They didn't include the quick release there. So while some people really like that just for it being easier to adjust, that also kind of prevents a, a theft opportunity. If somebody can just pop that lever up and take your seat, especially if you opted for an upgrade suspension seat post or something like that. So just be aware, you'll need a tool if you do want to adjust anything here. And moving over to the other side, we can take a look at the control system here. This is the Bosch Purion display. So it's not as fancy as their upgraded Intuvia. That one's a little bit bigger, has a little bit more details on it. But this is the more slimmed down, more basic one. It still gives you all the information that you need. And if you're really st stuck on getting an Intuvia, you can swap those out. It's compatible with all the Bosch systems. We're going to go ahead and fire this up here. Power button is up on the top side. And it's a monochrome LCD, as you can see. It's really easy to see, even in bright daylight. You are in shadow right now, but we've been riding this around quite a bit out in the sun. No problem seeing it. We get our speed readout on the top here, our assist level in the middle, and then a battery readout right down there on the bottom. It's only five bars, which isn't very precise, but fortunately, we don't really need it to be any more precise because we can hold down the minus here. We can see our trip distance. Then there's our total distance or our odometer. Do that one more time and boom, you get a range meter there. So we're, we don't have assist turned on right now. So let's go ahead and hit plus there so that we can go up to eco mode. So as you can see, we've got a 45 mile range estimate there. And if we were to bump that all the way up into turbo, you'll see that range estimate update 16 miles. So that makes it so we don't really need a battery percentage. You can just get a precise range readout, which I like better because then you don't have to look at it and say, well, I have 27%. How many miles do I think I can go on that? This just gives it to you straight. So I appreciate that. The holding down the up button will also turn on the headlights, which you can see we've got those turned on here. And in the back, even in daylight, really easy to see. And you can even ride with those on during the day if you want to. That's a good thing to do just for safety if you're in a high traffic area. And then of course there is a walk mode down on the bottom that you can hold that will move the bike forward at, of course, a walking pace. Awesome if you're maybe carrying a few too many things that are awkward to ride with or walking with some friends or something like that. So I appreciate having that on there. That's becoming pretty standard these days. And the brake levers on this bike, Shimano brakes, which is similar to what we saw on yesterday's review with the Ultimate T10, but a little bit different brakes here. These are the BR402s here, or excuse me, the MT402s, and they have three finger levers, so a little bit bigger on there and a little bit easier to actuate. And they're hydraulic disc brakes, so they're already really easy. So just a little bit extra on there. And we'll let you take a look at the rotors here. We're looking at 180 millimeter rotors in the front and then 160 there in the back. Dual piston calipers, so really excellent stopping power on these. And we go down some pretty steep hills in the ride test as well so that you can check those out. All right, guys, so moving up towards the front so we can take a look at the suspension here. We've got a Suntour suspension fork, air suspension fork, fork 80 millimeters of travel that does an awesome job dampening out any kind of bumps that you might run into while you're riding and adjustable of course here for lockout and you've got preload over on the other side and that helps a lot these tires don't add a whole lot of comfort to them they're more about speed and efficiency if you look at the tread on these you've got the bigger tread pattern in the middle that is great for when you're riding on pavement a little bit less friction helps you to move faster and more efficiently and then we've got a little bit more aggressive on the sides here that helps you to have more traction when you're turning, of course, keep you from slipping and falling over. So that is fantastic. And let's talk about the motor a little bit. We jumped into it briefly, but one thing that's new, changed, I should say, 
great in these newer Bosch motors is that you have a bigger chain ring and it's just a one-to-one -one ratio where before you might have had a small maybe 15 tooth chain ring and then you had what was called reduction gearing so that you would pedal the cranks one full revolution and then because of that reduction gearing it would move the chain ring two and a half times and so that helped out a bit with being you know a little bit easier on the chain and stuff like that but it had a trade-off that you would get drag from those internal gears there. So if you were pedaling the bike without electric assistance or beyond the point of electric assistance, then you'd feel that drag. It made you a little bit less efficient. So I like this change back to the one-to-one -one ratio setup. We mentioned the reduced footprint on here, only 6.3 pounds on this motor. It supports pedal cadence up to 120 RPM and up to 340% max support when you're up at the highest level of assist. That is 75 Newton meters of torque that it puts out as well. So it does an awesome job climbing and you know, pushing you up to those higher speeds, up to around 20 miles per hour if you're wanting to really get cruising. It is louder by quite a bit. This, the Bosch performance line, just the standard one and not the speed, is really quiet, almost to the point where you can't hear it. You can definitely hear this one. We're not talking hub motor levels of sound, but it's up there quite a bit. You'll be able to listen to that on the ride test, of course, and really check that out for yourselves. And we didn't look at the saddle yet, but this is a Cell Royale Ascenza saddle. So it's a little bit bigger, got a little bit more cushion on it. Feels really nice. It's not, uh, it's not the ultimate in cushion, of course, but really, if you wanted to soften that out even more, you'd probably be better off going for a suspension seat post on the back as opposed to an even bigger, you know, one of the oversized Grand Star type saddles. Really up to you, but the suspension seat post would be my recommendation for really even further cushioning out that ride. We are going to go cruise around downtown Santa Cruz here, find some hills that we can ride up, and yeah, let's see how it does. If you notice my displays off here, I'm actually just riding this in you know, acoustic mode. No electric assistance at all. Rides really smooth. Feels like a regular bike. I really appreciate that. Same experience on the other Gazelle bikes that I've ridden. I appreciate that attention to detail on the you know, actual bike components. We're gonna go ahead and fire things up here. I'm gonna move it on up to Eco. We'll just ride in that for now. I really like Eco on these models because it's nice and smooth, just a little bit of assistance. And as you can see, we've got 57 miles left on the range too with the full battery. So you can really take this thing a long ways. We're using the Bosch Performance Line Speed here. This is the speed pedelec version of theirs. Still no throttle, just electric assistance. And it's louder than the standard performance line. We'll give you a listen here. Remember, this is in eco mode, pretty quiet here. And these Bosch performance line speeds, this is version 4.0. One of their later generations, really lightweight motor, helps keep the volume down a bit. And we're gonna shift that on up a bit to turbo so that you can hear how much louder it is. Definitely a bit more audible than the standard performance line. If you were here for our review of the standard T10, the Ultimate T10 from Gazelle, which had just the standard performance line, that one is really quiet and stealthy. This one, a little bit more volume. Still not too bad though. It's certainly not obnoxious and overbearing the way you get with some hub drive motors. And actually we can show you a side-by-side -side comparison for it too if you want to hear the change in the volume. Because I've got, if out here is on the Ultimate T10, this is just the standard, not the Speed Pedelec version. Will you put yours up to turbo just so we can see if we can even hear the motor there? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So I've got mine turned off so we won't hear anything for it. So yeah, go for it. Oh, 
Oh yeah, man, it's so quiet. I can't even hear your motor at all from back here. <laughs> so on this one here, you get a, a bit more volume, but of course the trade-off for that, you get a lot more speed. So keep that in mind when you're picking which one is good for you. Feel comfortable with going that way and taking a left turn over? Oh yeah, hey, let's do it. You got enough speed. Oh yes. And something we were talking about earlier that's really nice on the T-Ton Plus here when you get that extra speed is you can really keep up with traffic. Sometimes it's not as safe to ride in the bike lane on the side of the road. It's a little bit safer to just get in the lane, ride with traffic, go with the flow of traffic when you're in those 25 to 35-ish mile per hour speed zones. You can really do that easily on this bike. Real good stability here too, as you can see. That's something that I really enjoyed on yesterday's bike, was that stability. All right, here's, here we go. Let's shift down. Oh yeah. This is real steep and it's windy. A really sharp turn here. And I'm just cruising easily up in first gear and in turbo, but I'm, I'm not really pu pushing very much in here. Going downhill, put those brakes to the test. Feel like I'm doing one-handed stunt driving here. That was fun. We're gonna take a look at the derailleur again. I'll get us shifted back down a little bit. We'll. Uh, We'll say we'll say in tour here. Oop. All right, so we're all the way down in first here. We'll just shift up through those. So there you have it. Solid shifting performance, of course, from that Dior XT. A little bit clunky. I was easing off the pedals a little bit to shift, but not a whole lot. That's one thing these Bosch mid drives have is shift detection. Helps out with the shifting there, but still good to ease off a little bit as you would on a standard bike. Let's get caught up here. Oh, this is awesome. I'm in, I think I'm in tour right now, which is only the second level of assist. So I'm still accelerating up this hill one so pretty easy to get up there guys getting up around 25 miles an hour there still had a couple gears left to shift up so that is super fun speed pedal -ec, love it really stable and well balanced as well riding no handed no problem which is awesome i even have a backpack on and still feels rock solid and stable really appreciate that it's Similar to the experience on the step through, but now, now we got that high step frame, gives it a little bit of extra strength to it. And I mean, you guys saw that. I was cruising, I think I had it where you could see the speedometer too. So I was hitting about 35 down that. Just one hand, felt rock solid.
Up oh, here we go. Got to shift down. Go up the super hill. So I did this yesterday, uh, right in the T10, standard T10 up there. And today we're doing it on the T10 Plus. So we got that speed bonus. My, I don't have my saddle raised as high either. Oh, yeah. So that's that's making it a little more challenging. It felt easier though. I could definitely feel more help on it. Man, that's a steep hill. Should All right. Two more times. Right? Yeah, that'd be the that'd be the real good workout. All right, guys. So that is a wrap for the Gazelle Ultimate T10 Plus HMB. Had a lot of fun checking out the bike. So thanks for hanging out and taking a look at it with me. Now we've got the full written review with all the specs, measurement, and everything else back at electricbikereview.com. We've also got our forum there where you can connect with other Gazelle riders and dealers and talk about their bikes on there. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Ride safe, and we will see you next time.